Today we're going to be installing this Haltech Rebel LS kit on our LS 350Z and show you how quick, painless, and no experience needed to get it running within 30 minutes. Included with your kit is going to come a harness, sensor pack, includes all the sensor you're going to need, sensor, oil pressure, TV6 transmission harness, EV6 injectors, or if you have the Gen 3, you'll get the other injectors. Um, Fort pin, three different alternators. One's gonna be the Delco, Bosch, Yazaki. And then of course you can't forget your Rebel. I suggest when you start doing this, you lay out your harness. That way you can get a lay of the land of which way goes where. It's gonna be pretty simple. Once you find the rubber grommet, that's what's gonna go on the firewall. Then from there, out to the engine and inside the car. You can move the rubber grommet um, a little bit from what I was told. And there's a couple of little tricks I'm gonna show you. So these long ones are gonna be your 25 amp outputs. That's the cool thing about the Rebel. It's based off the R3 and the R5, which means that it has four 25 amp outputs um, directly from the PDM power distribution module, which is integrated into the ECU, which means you can put your fans, uh, fuel pump, um, you know, electric, power steering, anything you'd like. And you can now log the amperage from that device. You can also set a fuse. Uh, so you could do like a 25 amp fuse, 20 amp, 15. And then if it ever gets triggered, you can give it a delay. So wait five seconds and try to put that fuse back in. And then if it ever triggers again, it'll wait another five seconds until you put it a, uh, of a max amount of allowed time that it can do that. But that way, if you're on track and you're drifting, and for whatever reason your wiring gets hot and trips the, the fuse, while you're drifting, five seconds later, it'll try to turn your fans back on. So if that fan doesn't completely come to a full stop, yeah, it may slow down, um, that's okay. That you'll make it through the lap and not cook your engine. Two plugs for the ECU. Uh, sorry, three plugs for the ECU. This is CAN. And then this is inputs and outputs on a separate harness. This pink wire is going to be your 12 volt switch. Should say here. And that's what it says. They made the crank extra long because they want you to run it through the front of the motor and down the front of the, the even head and back down so that way it doesn't get anywhere near your header and you don't know it, which happens all the time. How to tell which side is your odd and even side? If you look from the top of the engine, you will see that one of the heads is actually more in front of the other. That is going to be your odd because it starts at cylinder number one. Easy way to do it. I forget it all the time. And uh, that way, no matter which side of the car you're on, if one head, one head is offset to the other. It's just the way the LS is because you know one piston in front of the other. EV6 sub-injector harness, comes with different ones. Six pin rabbit wire adapter. Wiring harness is done. 
Um, we just plugged it in. There was nothing to wire, no crimpers, no nothing. Uh, you just have to find the right adapter for whatever alternator you have, whatever drive-by wire, whatever injectors you have, and it all clicks. There's sub-harnesses for each one of those. Uh, the biggest thing I would say is remember, the crank sensor comes around and under, and it's a perfect distance, by the way. The, these two are gonna be the fans. It technically only says fan on one of them, uh, but the other one says auxiliary. 25 amp, uh, I will be running the two fans separately because they're the Mishimoto race lines and I'm pretty sure they draw about probably 15 amps and that's 30 together. So I'm gonna separate them so each fan is uh, on a, se a separate load. I'll be able to data log the amperage of each fan and that way if one fails, the other one can stay on and vice versa. So this is redundancy will never or, you know, have no fan. So now we can go inside and connect the ECU, power it up, and then do the wizard. We're right there, right, Stevie? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jay-Z guy knows. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Um, you probably didn't see me using the sensor pack because this car already was running, so I had all the sensors included. But if you see here, intake air temp, the bong for your white band, the bong for the intake air temp, wash, whoa. And then some Bosch sensors here. Oh, this is your actual white band sensor. So you don't even need to purchase that. This is all we're gonna get on this side which are your two main plugs, your 25 amp plugs, your can. Um, this is gonna be your fuel pump, which is very long. It's gonna go around the back. And then your accessory inputs and outputs for extra stuff you may want to add and your 12 volt switch. And that's it. This is gonna give power when you turn the key. And now we uh, let's grab that ECU. Oh, so beautiful. So this is the cool part about this ECU. It is metal and uh, it has uh, its own included PDM. So it powers your accessories like I've been talking about for so much through these giant 25 amp uh, plug. Map sensor, internal map sensor, which we're not gonna be using because we have an external one. But if your car wasn't map sensor, it was MAF, you can delete the MAF, just put it right there. Uh, it comes now with a USB-C, which is awesome. And that's it. Here I have the only plugs I ended up having a wire on the car. Um, this on the left is the drive-by wire. The harness comes for a Corvette pedal. So if you have a chassis that's usually drive-by cable, you could just go get a pedal, pedal, make a mount, and you're done, it'll plug right in. But just in case you don't, you have a Z or you wanna use a Z pedal. The orange wires are five volt power. Um, the black with the white stripe are the five bowl grounds. And the other two, uh, orange and yellow and orange and green, are the pedal sensor uh, signal, which doesn't matter which one you put it on. It, it will learn it when you go to uh, calibrate the throttle. That's pretty much it. The plug side on the 350Z is pretty simple. Power is Power and ground are on the outsides and signals are in the middle. And I believe Power and ground, it's like a blue wire, and I forget the net color of the other one. Um, oh, here, I have them right here. So, the power ones is a blue wire and a black and orange. The ground wires are a green and red and a yellow. And then the middle ones are, which are the signals, black and white and red and yellow. And there you go, just put that together, you'll have a, a pedal. The starter signal is through the key all the way into that plug. From that plug, I grab it and I bring it here, and this goes directly to your starter. The starter has nothing to do with this harness, it is all in the chassis side of the harness. The pink wire from this harness, it's gonna go to this pink and black wire that I have here, which goes on, I don't remember the color on the other side of the harness, and that is your 12 volt switch uh, source. It's out there somewhere. That's pretty much it. All this other accessory stuff have 
other things that I'll maybe wire in the future, but not right now. And this is my flex fuel sensor, which I used to have on the other harness. And basically you just find um, a, a, a sensor in that you can put a 12 volt power, a switch power and a ground and you got flex fuel. But we're not doing that right now. We technically don't need this to run the car. All we need is a throttle and these two wires right here. So the Rebel comes with USB-C, which is how you know it's better than everybody else. Comes down here. Here's the cool part. I'm pretty sure, just like the R3, you don't need to have the car on. You honestly don't even need the power and ground on. And the laptop will power the ECU. Let's see. Car's not on right now. Light came on. Yep. So your laptop will power the ECU even on a bench. It doesn't need any of the wires, which is sick. All right, so it hit me with an accept. Vehicle name, LS3. It has a description. You can type stuff on there. I'm gonna do LS3. Um, Texas speed stage three camp kit. That's it, E85. And then we're going to hit next. Now it says select engine, which it's an L92, but it's technically LS3 accessories. So we're going to go ahead and do the LS3 because I've changed everything to LS3. There's nothing L92 about it. Next. Camshaft. We're going to do a raised camshaft, which is 230 degrees or up or higher. This has like 240, 244, something like that. Next. So now... It's asking me for the drive-by wire. Um, GM drive-by wire, 87 millimeter. I have a 90 millimeter. Uh, we'll do 87. I don't remember the size of this drive-by wire. Next. Now the, the on-off switch is already blinking red. Um, that is to re it wants you to reset, but you don't have to do that. You wait until the wizard's uh, over. So uh, now it wants to know the map sensor, which is a stock LS31 Gen 4, not a three bar. It is a one bar Gen 4 one bar. Next fuel system. We do not have 42 pound injectors. We have uh, E85 injectors, it's it's from another GM car. I believe they're 52 pounds. So we're going to go down to GM. And we're going to find them right here. 52 pound. Just because I'm curious. Let me see what other GM injectors it's got here. Okay. All right. Next, the coil packs that we're using, Gen 4 LS coils, those don't look like that, this one, yeah, these right here, the 510s. Next, summary, and we're just going to hit complete, and it should reset everything. Turn on the ignition to start the setup checklist. Uh, fuel pump primed. That's yeah, a good that's sign. Yeah, that Let's check in the fans. fans. Oh, the fans are on the can, and the can is disconnected currently. So that's different. Air temperature is working, coolant temperature is working, oil pressure is not working. Oh, it might be. It is working. It's just zero because it's not running. Map sensor is working.
Steezy got in the driver's seat, he's gonna, we're gonna calibrate the throttle right now, see if we did that properly. So, um, accelerator pedal is not pressed. You don't have it pressed? No. So calibrate. Press the accelerator all the way to the bottom. All the way. All the way. Hold it. Holding. Calibrate. That's it. And now, calibrating this. I hear it doing things. And now it's green. Okay, complete. And now, this means you should be able to start it. Try it? Try it. I have to press the clutch in. Back off and try again. Press the clutch. Press the clutch. Yeah. Clutch all the way in? Yeah. Okay. Start wire. Oh, I never put it in the starter. Oh my god. <laughs> we rewired it and never put it back in. Yeah, one sec. I don't want to get out. Of the key. You don't have to. Okay. Just leave the key off. I want to disconnect the fans. Yeah. Alright. Well, the starter wasn't going to work. It was not plugged in, right? It's right here. This is the fan wiring, and we haven't done it. So, the thing I'm going to teach you, I don't know if I'll do it, so I'll say it now. You don't want to keep wires this long. The longer the wire, the more current goes through, amperage, heat. So make sure you cut it to length at your fans. So don't, don't bunch this up like this. You can do that with signal wires and things like that. But when it comes to high amperage wires, make them as short as possible. The starter, which is now connected. So we can try to start it. You try to start it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Battery's a little low. Going? Yeah, see if it'll go. Right. Stop, stop. No, no, no. Yeah, not enough juice, so. We got a jumper? Yeah, we got to jump it. Uh. We'll be back. We just cranked it and it started a sputter. It just needed uh, power. So we haven't done any tuning, anything at all. We just did the setup wizard like you saw. Touching anything. I'm gonna give it a little throttle. So just like I thought, I had it on pump gas instead of ethanol. So you have to hit click fuel tuning, and then in there it's asking you what fuel you're running, and then I put ethanol, and now it's doing the 30% increase for ethanol.